number two, you know, I mean, Good morning, everyone. Morning. Oh, was I must. As to be able to have this service here today, um, this is going to be called the Ekoku Family Service. So we're going to talk about Ekoku today. And I'd like to share the service order. We're going to have uh, the reading of the three treasures. So if you have the purple book, Please have that ready, and then uh, following the three treasures, the nice song one, which is the three treasures in Japanese. This will be followed by Sutra chanting, Sambujo, and uh, Junirai. So the Junirai is what page? Page 67 in the uh, purple book. Okay, welcome. Thank you for coming. So, switch your chanting. Sambujo and Junirai, Nembutsu and Ekoku will complete the chanting portion of our service and then I'll be back for our Dharma message. Okay, so let's begin with the three treasures. Hard is it to be born into human life, now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One, now we hear it. If we do not realize the truth in this life, when will it be realized? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we absorb ourselves in the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme will. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we be submerged in the depths of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as disciples of Buddha and be freed from all hindrances, becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony, in the spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriad ages of compass, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teachings. Rai san mo, ninjin ukekata shi imasune ni uku, uppo ukekata shi imasune ni kiku. Tathagata 
大衆者共に死神に参謀に消えし立て祭るべし自ら仏に消えし立て祭るまさに願わくば主情と共に大道を大下して無常意を起こさん自ら法に消えし立て祭るまさに願わくば主情と共に深く胸像に入りて知恵を見のごとくならん。自ら僧に消し立てまつる。まさに願わくば主情と共に大衆を通りして一切無下ならん。無常人人未明の方は百千万号にも愛をことかたし。我は検問地十字することを得たり、願わくば如来の真実義を消し立てまつらん。ナモアミラムツ、ナモアミラムツ、ナモアミラムツ、ナモアンダー、ナモアンダー。三部長、十二来。
cutting out signals today, so maybe the chanting was whole and completed, so those are good things to know. But little by little we change this and that, and it seems like it's all adding up nicely. So today, for this talk, I wanted to talk about uh, Ekoku. So please join me in Gatsho as I read this reading. May this merit virtue be shared equally with all beings. May we together awaken the Bodhi mind and be born in the realm of serenity and joy. So this verse, Namo Amidavutsu, Namo Amidavutsu, Namo Amidavutsu, Namanda, Namanda. Okay. So this verse is talking about merit, virtue, merit, virtue. Okay. So merit, virtue is spiritual cash, spiritual currency. Okay. So as we practice, we gain merit. This is kind of a currency in the general understanding. Okay? And this currency is to be shared with all <coughs> beings equally with everyone okay? throughout the world, throughout the universe. So the effort together, we come to our spiritual awakening. Okay? We, we attain enlightenment or go to the pure land together, utilizing this uh, 
merit virtue. And so we're able to enter what they call pure land, the realm of serenity in joy. Okay? So I don't know if you recognize this, this uh, quote. Probably you recognize it easier in Japanese, right? usually read it in English, but we do this at the end of every time we chant. So these are the words that are being conveyed at the end of each chant, talking about this merit transference, ekoku. And so when you learn about ekoku, there's all these different aspects. Uh, also, eko again, so eko, so merit that you gain doing practices on the way to becoming enlightened. And once you become an enlightened person, Genso Eko, the merit you transfer as an enlightened being to other people, okay? And so this is called merit transference in the phase of going, merit transference in the phase of returning. And so they divide all these things. It can get very, very complicated as you learn about this merit transference, Ekoku. And so as you look at it, we're looking at this Bodhisattva ideal, okay? Uh, enlightenment for all beings, not just ourselves. Is this cutting out? Okay, it's okay. So enlightenment for all beings is the idea that we share merit with all beings, not only for ourselves. And this, you could see the beginnings of this idea uh, from Shakyamuni Buddha, you know, he became enlightened. Should I share this with others or not? This is too complicated. This is difficult to teach. So maybe you know, I should just sit and appreciate, enjoy this awakening experience. And he decided, I need to share these teachings. I need to share my enlightenment. And so he went to find the, his friends that he started, you know, trying to uh, come to his awakening with. So he, the disciples that he had studied and meditated with came to look for them first, taught them the first lesson, continued on for the next 35 years to, to teach as many people as he could. So this is sharing his awakening with all beings. And this is the root of the Bodhisattva ideal that enlightenment alone is not of value. It's not until we share it that it becomes of value. So even in our practice, if we sit in meditation, practicing by ourselves, and it doesn't mean much. But if we practice doing these six paramitas or whatever, uh, supporting the temple, doing helping at the bazaar, to helping at service, uh, other activities that we have, helping the temple get along, helping our members get along. If we do all these practices, then it becomes a bodhisattva ideal that we're sharing with all beings, okay? Then it becomes a value, not just I want to become a Buddha, right? So there's a distinction there. There's this self-centered practice, we're going beyond this. Then. In Shin Buddhism, there's this practice beyond the self. Okay, we're concerned with all beings. And so when we learn about this, how the world and how everything works is interconnected and interdependent, right? Then we see we are connected to everything. No matter what we do, we even we share a meal. Some I just had an interview with two college students, and the example I shared was you just go to McDonald's and you buy a Big Mac or something, a cheeseburger. How many people were involved to just let you enjoy this cheeseburger? Even the bun and the farmers and, you know, growing wheat, taking, harvesting the wheat, taking it to the market, and 
that becomes flour, that becomes bread, that becomes buns. Truckers bring it and deliver it to all the McDonald's throughout the world. And then these are put on by the workers. They put the uh, mustard, mayonnaise, whatever, ketchup on there, and the beef, same thing, right? The whole story, everything we have, one hamburger, that's a rancher raising his cattle, taking, getting them uh, big enough to take them to slaughter, this becomes hamburger delivered to all the Safeways or to all the McDonald's throughout the world. And this becomes my cheeseburger, right? So how many people were touched by eating one simple hamburger or, or anything, right? Sushi, anything, sukiyaki at the restaurant, whatever we might have. It takes so many, an infinite number of people. So when we become aware of that, then we're aware of this interconnected reality and gradually as this becomes our vision we enter this thought prajna not just my own thinking but this prajna perception the buddha's perspective of the world right that we can recognize the interconnectedness of the whole world in everything we do we put on a, our shoes and who knows how many infinite number of people. Where did the fabric come from? Where was the shoe made? Maybe in, in uh, Mexico or South America or China, right? And then millions of people are connected to this factory, wherever it might be, bringing in our shoes, our shirt, whatever we're wearing today, right? And, and so we become, if we can become aware that we are a part of this interconnected reality, then we can be uh, aware of this practice beyond the self. And so when we think of enlightenment and spiritual practice, the same interconnectedness that we touch an infinite number of people, an infinite number of people touch on us to hear this Dharma teachings, right? How many people were involved to have this temple here surviving? Or to have Jodo Shinchu here? What page was the sutra on? Who was involved to make this one book, right? And so we're always interconnected to an infinite, infinite number of people, right? So, so Professor Hirota says the Pure Land Path is distinctive in presenting a way by which all people may realize awakening. And so to become aware that we are connected, we are a part of all people. And so when we're talking about practice beyond the self, then there's Amida, okay? The role of Amida in Shin Buddhism through practice beyond the self, there's no room for the separation of self and other and bypassing our own limited self. Okay, not only my effort to become awakened, you know, I could say, now Mami Dhammatsu a million times, trying as hard as I can, I'm not gonna become awakened. That's not how it works. Amida awakens us. Reality awakens us. This interconnected reality, infinite in number, awakens me, okay? So all of these things are in, in effect. Awakening is received from Amida. That's why they say it's not the role of our ego effort. Okay? We're not doing it by ourselves. And when they say that, then this motivation of self-gain is completely removed. Completely. So, Rinyo Shoni, this is Ekhoku, is mere transference of Amida Buddha's awakening to all sentient beings. From Amida to us, not our efforts. From Amida, reality itself is awakening us. Okay? So, awakening is received and not accomplished. So, this is mere transference. And so, when we look at this, People look at this and so that means we don't need to practice, we don't need to do anything, but that's not a true understanding either. We still have to be 
practicing these six paramitas, not to become an awakened being, but to keep this harmony within ourselves and with each other. And all of this allows us to awaken as well. Okay? So when people think that we don't have to do anything, Amita does everything, so we don't have to practice, we don't have to do anything, that's a misunderstanding. So then comes into play social engagement. How do we engage with things that are going on in the world? Wars, politics, all these things. And I think this is a natural part of uh, merit transfers, okay? Uh, social engagement is reflected in our actions. And anytime you hear criticism about that, you say, wait a minute, that's not true. Everyone here is active to some degree, to different degrees. You have different interests in what you are uh, concerned about and, and uh, your own karmic conditions might affect you know, what you are interested in, what you are allowed to do. You know, some people have limitations that they are have to take care of their elders or siblings or young ones and things like this and this becomes a priority to them and other people might be involved in uh, ecology or, or uh, you know, concerns about the environment and things like this and that doesn't mean everyone has to do it. Some people are more connected to those thoughts and ideas. Their conditions are uh, maybe more aligned to that at this point in time in their lives. So they do these efforts. And, and so when people say that Buddhists are not socially engaged or Shin Buddhists are not socially engaged, uh, they're more concerned with their temple or something like that, it's not true. You look at the people at our temple, they're involved in so many different things, so many different things. The temple is one of them, right? And so you see all these things that are happening and how we are connected to this infinite that we are calling Amida, that we are recognizing that Amida. So every time we finish our chanting and we finish with Nembutsu Gekoku, right? Kanishi Kudoku, all these thoughts are going on as we express this Gekoku, right? So we can consider this every time we chant. This is a big part of our practice to be able to recognize this. What does this merit transference mean? What does it mean to me? You know, how do we understand this merit transference, our own practice and our engagement with each other and with the world? And what is the role of Amida in all of this that we're talking about? So it's not so simple, not just simple, you know, four lines, a few syllables that we chant along together. There's so much impacted into this that I think it's helpful to review this, to look at it, and to consider. So maybe we uh, awaken a little bit more when we come to this portion. So yeah, we were talking about that just last week, right? So all of this is very, important and fulfilling. So, thank you. Please put our hands together. We'll read this verse one more time. May this merit virtue be shared equally with all beings. May we together awaken the Bodhi mind and be born in the realm of serenity and joy. Kanni shiku doku yodo se isai do hongo daishin ojo anrakko Namo Okay, thank you very much. It's good to have people here because it's not quite uh, used to this, but it's so nice to sit together, hear the other voices as we chant, be able to share a little message and, and Seems like the cameras are working, uh, but uh, yeah, nice to be able to come to this point and gradually we could share 
invite other people to come. And little by little, we can feel a little bit safer. We'll have our continue to be safe wearing our masks and, and going through our protocol. But we have enough room here to include a few more people that could come live. Others are comfortable to be at home. And so this is going to work out and it will fluctuate as we get more people here on certain occasions. We have new uh, upcoming you know, major services that more people might want to come. Hatsubon is one of them coming up in July. So uh, we'll work on all of our temple activities and services together. We would like to thank everyone who set up for this service. We have the uh, flowers and fruits and the uh, onaiji set up very nicely and many people were uh, a part of that uh, video crew and so many things going on and so we thank everyone who helped to put this service together so um, i see the incense is burning here and at home please set up as you have uh, prepared to do and we can conclude this service uh, with gasho and then we'll come up and offer incense Please join me in this show one final time. Namo Amidabhasa. Namo Amidabhasa. Namo Amidabhasa. Namo Amidabhasa. Namo Amidabhasa. Thank you for being here. Thank you.